Ladies and gentlemen, section 1.2, we're going to expand our idea of rate equations. We're going to take the very simple change in amount over change in time, and we're going to give some examples of what is the change in amount. It can basically be seven things. So the change in amount and the seven things deal with the uh, subscripts, solid, liquid, aqueous, and gas. We saw that yesterday. Coefficients in front of um, the gases and whether it's endo or exothermic. That's going to play uh, a role in, in the rest of the chapter. So the very first change in amount that, um, that we can monitor is color. Very cut and dry. You can only monitor color when color is given to you. For example, this is copper and clear, and it's turning into something that's blue, clear, and brown. You can't make up your own colors. If the color is changing, you can monitor change in color. In another example, we've got something that's blue and gray turning into red and colorless. Again, the color is given. You can monitor the color. Just to expand on these examples a little bit and review some of the things that we did yesterday, keep in mind that these ex are examples of formula equations. And we can write them in ionic equations. Ionic equations is when you take the aqueous item and you break it down into its ions. So the complete ionic equation is going to be Cu plus 2 aqueous plus 2 NO3 minuses aqueous plus the Zn solid is going to stay a solid. It's going to form Cu solid, solid stays a solid, Zn plus 2 aqueous and 2 NO3 minuses. And again, those are aqueous. I'm not writing in the aqueous because I'm lazy. Um, we will be doing that on quizzes and tests and worksheets and stuff. The net ionic equation, some of you have been introduced to that last year, is one step further. It makes things more simple. Net ionic equation is when you eliminate the spectators. You will notice that you have two NO3s and two NO3s. They are the same on either side. They are not changing as the reaction proceeds. They're just watching the reaction. That's why they're called spectators. So when you write the net ionic equation, you eliminate the spectators. So all that's left over is the Cu plus 2 aqueous, the Zn solid, which has never changed, the Cu solid hasn't changed, and Zn plus 2. All three forms um, will be given to you and you can monitor um, color of color is given in all three forms. The next one, temperature change. These are either exo or endothermic. Exothermic releases energy. The surroundings will um, get warmer or gain energy. Okay? The system itself will lose it starts off high, ends low. The reactants are um, contain a lot of energy, contain a lot of heat, and the products are lower. Okay? This delta H value is negative. It loses energy. In an endothermic reaction, it's opposite. Starts low, ends high. Reactants are low energy, products are high energy. The system, the delta H, is positive. It gained. And for the system to gain energy, the surroundings will lose energy. Again, we'll talk about this later and you're going to see this in labs. Change in color, change in temperature is what we've done so far. Pressure. This is a new one. Pressure is an constant volume, think of it as a sealed container. This is a closed system. Pressure can only be changed by gases. You have to look to see if more gases are being made. If the number of gases in the products are higher, if more gases are being made, then the pressure will increase. Here we have zero moles of gas and you're forming one mole of gas. The pressure will go up. Increase in pressure. The opposite is also true. If 
the number of gases are decreasing, the pressure will decrease. And obviously, if the number of gases are staying the same, if you have equal moles of gas on either side, you notice you have one, two moles of gas here, one, two moles of gas here, this pressure is not going to change. You make more gas, you have more pressure. You make less gas, you have less pressure. Which brings us into volume. Volume is a rare one. It's very hard to watch volume change, unless you have a very specific example, like I'm showing you here, like a balloon is um, being blown up, or you're collecting gas in a test tube, which we're going to try to do in, uh, in class. If you can physically see the volume changing, well then fine, you're going to change the volume. It's a rare example, don't get used to it. Mass changes are tricky. Okay, this is your number one example right here, heads up with this one. The first example of a mass change is obvious. You find something that's a solid. Here, the physical amount of mg solid is going down. There is no mg on this side. So the mass of mg solid is decreasing. You can see that. It was an mg solid, now it's not there anymore. It's slowly going away. Okay, that's the easiest of the mass changes. The hardest of the mass changes is this next one. In this example, you've got everything in one beaker, like you normally would, but you've got a gas being produced, and that gas is going to escape if the lid is off. If this escapes, the mass of the entire container is going to go down. So you can, you'll actually be able to see on a scale this mass of reaction decreasing because the gas is leaving. And this is a lab and you're going you're gonna to witness that for yourself. So we have a mass of an individual item or a mass of the con entire container. In this example, you cannot do a mass of an aqueous um, item. They're aqueous. They're dissolved in solution. If they're dissolved in solution, you can't weigh an ion. They're, it's just too small. Um, the next one that we can monitor is very straightforward. Molar concentration is big M, uh, square brackets. Um, that is what you use to determine the, the, um, the change in ions. Concentration is f basically for ions only. Um, so here we've got H+. Plus. Um, you can monitor H+. Plus. The amount of H+, plus is going to decrease. It's going to decrease because it, it's going to be used up as a reactant, and it's not on the product side. But the amount of Mg plus 2 is going to increase. It is on the product side. You're making Mg plus 2. So the change in rate of the concentration of Mg plus 2, the concentration of Mg plus 2 is going to increase over time. World's largest blank for the smallest uh, um, one out there. It's embarrassing. So back to spectators. This is the third time we've seen this. Br is on both sides. You have two BRs on both sides. So does the amount, does the concentration of BR change? No. It does not change because it is a spectator. It's not part of the reaction. Lastly, a very special case. Um, this is more in Chapter 4. It's uh, pH. It's um, acidity. If specifically the concentration of H plus is going up or down, then you can monitor its change in pH. Okay. In chapter one, we're not going to get into the details of pH, but just understand that pH can go up or down. How acidic or basic something is will go up and down if you change the H plus. Okay? So give that a very close read, and you'll see um, a lot more of this as we go. It says, if H plus is a reactant, or if any acid is present, the concentration of H plus will decrease, so the pH will increase. It's, it's inversely related. So the, the concentration of H plus decreases means you're going to increase the pH. It's a fairly tricky question one that you're going to want to slow down on, and you'll have some chance to practice that um, in our notes.
There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Section 1.2.